Welcome to another edition of Bucknell Football 94. Bob Beeler along with the head coach of the Bucknell Bison, Lou Maranzana. And coach, this week it was kind of like the fish story, the one that got away. The team played very, very well throughout the course of the ball game in the last couple of minutes. Unfortunately, some things happened and Princeton was able to come out on top. It was a hell of a football game, Bob. You know, I, I don't know, I don't get to see enough football maybe myself to know what the fans like, but I know that as football coach, that was a great game. And it was just, we were not both sides knocking people down going to the to the last down of the of the football game and uh, we got to give Princeton, Princeton credit for doing the right things at the end of the football game and uh, you know I'm very proud of the way our guys fought and I thought we had a great chance to win the game and unfortunately didn't come out with the, with the victory in the six years you've been here have you ever been involved in more of a defensive struggle it seemed like the hitting down there was just outstanding uh, the, Ironically, the last time we played Princeton at home, mm -hmm. it was a game very similar, and we were able to, to come away with a very close victory, and it was very much like that. It was just bang it out and very little scoring, and uh, we were able to get a slight edge. Take a look now at highlights from the first half. It was kind of an overcast day. Rain parts throughout the game, and Coach, again, once again, you win the toss and elect to defer, and you put your defense on the field in this day. That was certainly a good decision. Yeah, it was uh, a little sloppy. The, the ground was in pretty good shape. We were able to get the ball down there and uh, in good shape, get good position, and um, do our job on defense. We're going to see a lot of defensive highlights throughout the course of today's game. Near fumble recovery there for the Bison. This is... Uh, Again, a little bit later on in the first quarter, your linebackers have had an outstanding game. We played the best game that we've played so far in defense, without question. The guys were all running hard. Uh, we see Mark Miller here coming out of the secondary, making a good play on the reverse. It's kind of a tough day for both teams' offenses. We're going to see Rob Gluss complete a pass here. He was only 6 for 20 on the game, and he was pressured a lot during the game. You know, you can talk about the weather a little bit, but it was also, I think both teams were uh, were kind of playing pretty close to the vest, and uh, here they make a big play where they rush off the backside and a sprint pass, and they're able to get Rob just as he's about to let it go. Right here, we're going to see Russ Strohecker's 300th career tackle for your starter, who's had a great career. He's uh, played a lot of football and made a lot of tackles, and I think that just speaks for itself. And Jeremy Patty will come up with a sack. Again, Harvey was a tough guy to bring down, moving around in the pocket, but Patty did a good job there. Yeah, every time we finally did get him, you see in a second David nailing him, we'll all say, Poof, got him. We look here, this has been a scenario for Bucknell scoring drives throughout the first four games of the season. A nice punt return to springboard things. Phillips takes the catch at the 50. Mike got shaken up in the game. How is he? Mike's fine. He got bruised in his uh, lower leg, but he's going to be okay. And a big fourth down play here to keep the touchdown drive alive. We yeah, were able to, to convert and, uh, and get that important first down and third and long. So critical for us. And Richard Lemon again would have over 100 yards for the eighth consecutive week. Taking the option toss from uh, Rob Gluss, the quarterback, getting you close. And third and goal, you pull a little surprise. Craig Svensson is the pullback. Just a little uh, you know, waggle pass here. And Craig's able to sneak out there. They're pressuring and they don't get on him quite quick enough. And the Bison would lead 7 to nothing with 7 minutes and 16 seconds to go in the second quarter. And, Coach, it was a game in which there were very few scoring opportunities in the first half, and that was really the only one. You know, you, when you're playing a game like that and you get 7 points and you feel like you're playing good defense, uh, it tends to make you say, well, we're just going to keep doing this. We're not going to take any big chances. And I think that's pretty much characterizes the way we played, you know, on, on offense. And we played hard. And uh, maybe in some ways, just because of the situation and the weather, maybe we played a little bit more careful than maybe we played some other times mm -hmm. as well. Uh, but that's the way the game was, and that's the way you know, we needed to win it at the, at the time. Let's take a look at the next drive, one of the more important drives of the game. Princeton would get their offense going, get into Bucknell territory, and Coach, you'd have a very big fourth down stand to turn the ball back to you. Yeah, here they they're, uh, get around the corner here on a, on a toss play. I think probably the one time they did that with that particular play throughout the game. Here you see a really big, big weapon for Princeton, and I think you're going to see him improve and be an outstanding player. Brock Harvey scrambling, and uh, later on he'll make some plays throwing and scrambling. And here David Strickland will come up with a sack, and a very good job of tackling by David, 13 tackles in the game. Exactly. We're, we're not talking about catching a guy that can't move away from you. No Joe Namath on wobbly knees. No, <laughs> sir. And then Princeton getting one out in the flat to uh, Washington, made a couple of tacklers miss, and getting down inside the 35. And this is where your run defense gets tough. Andy Welty had 13 tackles. He co-led with David Strickland in the tackle department in the ball game. Third and one, here you'll get a break as Harvey will slip a little bit, but then fourth and one, great surge. Exactly. He bobbles that snap a little bit on, on third and one and puts them in a situation where now they've got to go for it and fourth down. 
and we get a uh, great surge there. Ed Berman does a particularly good job, shakes his guy, and you know, just ends up standing there. And a fourth down situation came with a couple of minutes left in the half. The score at the intermission would be 7 to nothing. That had to give you a huge lift going into the locker room. Yeah, we were excited. Uh, you know, we're, we're excited to be playing hard. We're excited to be on top. Uh, you know, the thing about playing football is that you've got to learn to be yourself and be excited and also keep yourself level and consistent enough that you can do what you need to do and execute and get it done and uh, you know I, we we came back out we you know were able to get the ball put it in position and still the you know our ability to capitalize I think in the second half and some of the opportunities we have probably as much as anything tells the tale in the, mm -hmm. in the game as it goes along well to me it looked like that it was just a hard-fought game the first half certainly an indication of that going into the locker room only leading seven nothing that's very, very reminiscent of the game that Princeton played here, I believe, it was in 1990. All right, and same kind of game, and uh, I'm feeling throughout the entire time that the, the outcome is going to be pretty much the same, particularly when they miss the final extra point there and, and leave us with a lead uh, with uh, about two minutes to go in the game. One of the things that has been credited to uh, Bucknell's successful start this season is a good strength and conditioning program in the offseason. Mark Braver takes a look. This week I had a chance to sit down with Eric Thurston, linebackers and strength coach for the Bison. My job is the linebacking coach and also the strength coach. And every day from 8 till noon I'm up in the football office. And then from noon till practice I'm down in the weight room and the guys will come down. And sometime between noon and practice time they'll work out. And basically day-to-day -day activities is breaking down film and doing all that stuff up football related stuff up in the office from eight until noon and then in the afternoon is dealt with the kids all day when i was in college i used to work out during the summer up at university of wisconsin and the strength coach up there i got to know really well and from wisconsin he went down to university of iowa and when i graduated i talked to him about being a you know strength coach ga and uh he hooked me up down there, and then when I got into strength conditioning down there, I also worked on the field with football, and I like lifting, I enjoy it, and I, it's a major point with football and all athletics, and basically that's how I got into it, and it was also another avenue of getting into a uh, Division 1A level of football that... Uh, through strength training that I could get on the field with. Coach Thurston requires all players to work out in the weight room. Lifting schedule is based around their schedule, and they pick and choose the times that they come in and lift, and it's all, all like I say, all based around their schedule, and uh, it's mandatory, and uh, that's a nice thing with Coach Louie understands the importance of a good strength program and he backs it up and they miss then they've got to do a little extra running after practice it's a lot of help to have him there and be like a consistent state of forces you know with all of us being able to draw off of when we need it during the season it's more or less you know working up the body and keeping everything else strong which is a real big deal to me because i consistently need to keep building up my body anyway because I'm one of the lighter defensive guys. Many players choose to spend their summers at Bucknell in order to prepare for the upcoming season. Major difference between the summer and in season, the summer it's geared to get yourself ready for football. And in season, the first and foremost is play football. And in season it's more of a maintenance program trying to keep you at the level of strength level and conditioning that you're at when you come in. And during the summer, it's high intensity, high volume, trying to get you prepared for the high contact and uh, major stresses that your body comes uh, during the football season. After four years, Coach Thurston feels a very special bond with his senior players. Uh, they're a great group of guys, and they really got after everything they've done and I remember my first year here their freshman year here and we were having a rotten season and the big thing is like the motivational thing is that they all are saying that hey wait till we're seniors and they kept getting after it in the weight room and also during the JV games and they were more or less 
separating themselves from the varsity and saying, hey, coach, just wait till we're seniors. We'll get the job done. And it's it's neat, and it's also great to see that uh, it's the success that they're having. For Bucknell Football 94, I'm Mark Braver. Thanks a lot, Mark. And coach, a lot of hard work put in by the team, both in the on-season and off-season time in the weight room. The, the connection between attitude and conditioning is huge. Uh, it's kind of like the con connection in, in, in business between investment and return. Mm -hmm. And uh, it really has been a big factor for us in Coach Thurston's work, uh, very, very important. Has it been more of a factor, do you think, as the years of football have gone on, it seems like it's really become more dominant, more teams have gone to it. The, uh, you know, the whole strength training part of it has really taken off since the late 70s, early 80s, and you, you, you got to be strong and be in great condition in order to, to compete at this time in college football. Let's take a look at highlights going to the third quarter. Bucknell would be in front seven to nothing. They would defer, so you'd get the football first. And third quarter, you'd live with outstanding field position. Unfortunately, couldn't capitalize. Great return here by Troy White. Has some things in the kicking game that, that we didn't do that were very critical, but throughout the game, even given those, by all the measures, we, we still uh, are winning the kicking game. And uh, there, Troy's a uh, return to the opening kickoff, second half, big one. Rob Gloss is sacked here. Be sacked five times in the second half. And this will be Rob's only completion of the second half. One for seven for negative seven. It's a tough day throwing the ball. Right, and uh, we weren't throwing it around that much either. I think you need to think about that as well. And Harvey here on a scramble will get out into the flat on third and eight. Jim Jaroshek with a great tackle stopping him in front of the first down. Right, another one of those, whoop, we got him. And Richard Lemon here will run for 16 yards, and that'll be his longest run of the day. And that's a good run, but with Rich, the last few weeks, you've been expecting some 70s and 80s. Yeah, he's, Rich is, you know, it's just a matter of, of the odds. He's going to pop out of there every so often, but he always, always works hard. Steve McHugh had a good day running with the ball there. And Gluss here has a pass that's nearly intercepted in the end zone. Now you have a third and eighth. Are you looking to set up the field goal here? Yeah, we ran the ball here. We thought that with the run... We have a great opportunity here to score on that play and don't execute it exactly right, but we wanted to, to know we'd at least get the field goal. They blocked the field goal, and now we've taken a uh, scoring opportunity, come out empty. Now it's still 7 to nothing. We begin the fourth quarter now, and uh, David Strickland again with another tackle for loss. Huge one on the running back, Jordan, and you're going to get a turnover and again start a nice drive inside of midfield. Exactly. The giveaway and takeaway thing, always a big uh, deal. They're very stingy offensively, didn't make a lot of mistakes, but John makes a big play here. You can see he dislocated his shoulder right after he uh, caught the ball, got bumped, and uh, passed it off there to, to Mark Miller. He'll be all right? Yeah, he uh, seems to be okay. He bounced back. Then you move the ball down close to the 10-yard line. Another fine run by Steve McHugh at fullback, and then unfortunately Princeton's going to get in here and come up with a turnover of their own. We feel like we're getting the advantage in the bang-on-them kind of business here. Where we're moving the ball, and unfortunately we, we've just gotten the, get, uh, the takeaway, and we give it back, and that evens it out. And now this is after an exchange of punts midway through the fourth quarter. Uh, it is uh, going deep, and a nice play by Charles Crutt. The great play by Charlie here, and he's doing what, what he needs to do there to, to cover up over the top of that receiver. In close game, there's always a play or two that you think are big plays. I was thinking this one might have been one of the biggest. Of the this day. is a huge play right here. The scramble, uh, the receiver runs across the, uh, the coverage and gets behind one of our deep guys, 44-yard uh, uh, gain. Andy Welvey does a great job at his linebacker spot, reading the screen, takes in for a loss, and... Here's a big play, third and 16. They're going to get very close to a first down. Exactly. Here they throw, the, uh, sneak it in there. Don't quite get the, the first down yardage. And then you've got another fourth and one. They're down 7 nothing. They'll go for it. The play would be called off sides, but looking at it, it looks very, very close. Well, we, we felt like this was a hard call to make. You know, officials got to make the calls they got to make. But here in a fourth and one uh, kind of situation with nothing really overtly looking real unusual. Great play by Andy Welty to come up and nail Jordan short of the uh, of the uh, first down marker, but they'll say that I guess somebody's helmet was uh, was a little bit over the line and they call off sides and that would lead uh, to a Princeton touchdown here. Yeah, they, they come back and make the conversion here. We, we Once we got them into the, uh, the goal line area, they went to the third down, finally got it in the third down. Missed the extra point. We're still ahead. Seven to six. Were you surprised they went for the one? 
Uh, actually, I was. I thought they would go for it, for it right there, but what basically I think what they were saying is they had some confidence in the way they were playing defense, thought they would get it back again, and uh, as it turned out, they were right. Let's take a look now at the highlights of Bucknell trying to run out the clock, and coaches, we look at these. Why is it so difficult to run out the clock? But first, we'll get to the uh, kick return. Great job by uh, Richard Lemon in the uh, onside kick return. There's going to be a clip or a block in the back call that is going to be a huge play in the game. Yeah, it's a, a call that where the ball is here, it's on the 45-yard line. We'll go back to the nine. It's like a 40, almost 40-yard 40 uh, assessment on a call that, you know, as we look at the tape, we're, we're questioning but those things that you have to deal with in the football game. Now, why is it so difficult for teams to run out the clock? I mean, the defenses, are they cheating up there to, at the try to stop the run? Well, I don't think there really is any any big reason here. Uh, you know, what we need to do here is we meet, need to make some first downs, and uh, we don't get quite enough on the first two runs and uh, get sacked in the third down pass. And uh, then they come through, and they do what they need to do. Here you see a good shot of it here. We have a uh, poor technique on our punt protection, and they beat it and, uh, and get the block. That's so the football game. Now they're ahead 12-7, to 7 and you have, I believe, what, one timeout left, and... Uh, You'll have to go about 80 yards. A good squib kick by Princeton. They cover it. You don't have a lot of field position to work with. Right. And now this is our kind of uh, getting into two-minute things. And, uh, you know, we're, we're not able to uh, to get it and to bring it down into, uh, into scoring position. And again, uh, when the rushers know that you have to throw, it makes it a little bit more difficult. We have a fourth and 15 play here with about a minute to go. And again, the field a little bit uh, slick. And uh, Sikowski falls down, and it's incomplete. And, Princeton wins a low-scoring game and uh, be a game that uh, I think you guys would like to be able to play again. Well, uh, you know, I'm proud of the way our guys played. I'm not, I'm not happy that we weren't mm -hmm. as consistent as we needed to be and, and didn't do all the things that were necessary to win the game. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's a good football team, a team that we really expected to beat. And I think that's an important, important point for us And that although this is a good team, it's a team that we feel like we... We should have been out there and had a great chance to win and uh, didn't get it done. But there, I think this is a game that we're going to profit from. And uh, a lot of things were better. We can see the things that we need to fix. And uh, we came out pretty healthy. And uh, we were home this week. So all those things are positive. After the game, we had a chance to catch up with Andy Welty. We'll uh, get his thoughts as we head to break. And we'll be back to talk with our special guests, David Strickland and Mark Miller, after this. Yeah, I, th I thought we played pretty well. Uh, you know, we couldn't get stopping that last drive but you know you know it's just the breaks you played tough played played hard but uh you know you got to go next week you know this is a terrible game to lose when you lose like this it's a tough game both sides both defenses played well uh neither offense could really get much going and you know we, they were lucky to be the last ones to get it going we were unfortunate that you know they scored this is the bison weekend review i'm john terry Bucknell's women's soccer team recorded one of the biggest wins in the five-year history of the program when the Bison beat Army 3-1 on Friday night. Freshman Lee Raymont scored twice to help Bucknell end Army's 16-game Patriot League winning streak. Bucknell's women's tennis team will be the number one seed at this weekend's Patriot League championships. After the Bison defeated Army and Fordham this weekend, Bucknell is a perfect 10-0 and will host the championships beginning this Saturday. Bucknell's golf team finished third at the Patriot League Golf Championships this weekend. Bucknell led after the first round as five different Bison shot in the 70s. Freshman Josh Hartman shot Bucknell's low round, a 73 on Saturday morning. Bucknell's men's soccer team had a 2-1 lead against Army on Saturday, but Army tied it up with five minutes left and then scored the game-winning goal with just nine seconds left in overtime. Now here's a look at some other Bucknell results. For Bucknell Football 94, I'm John Terry. We're back on Bucknell Football 94 with two members of uh, the defensive unit that had outstanding games on Saturday. Mark Miller, the free safety, and outside linebacker David Strickland. And Mark, we'll start with you. Uh, this season, you've moved from corner to free safety. How's the adjustment gone for you? Pretty well, Bob. Um, safety's a little bit different. You know, you got to play both sides of the field. Like cornerback, you're playing more of an athleticism role. You have to match up one-on-one -on -one against the receiver, whereas free safety, you're more like the quarterback. You have to make sure everybody's in their place gets the call. What's the most difficult thing about going to play free safety? Um, probably just the adjustments as far as making the calls. Knowing the defense, you have to know what every player does on the defense in order to do your job. Um, at corner, you play, you have the sideline as your friend, you know, and you have to match up. Like I said, it's more of an athleticism role. 
at safety, you really have to know, you know, everything that the defense entails. David, this week you were the Patriot League's Defensive Player of the Week for your 13 tackles and a couple of sacks against Princeton. Uh, what do you think was going well for you out there on the field Saturday? Yeah, it really was. I think the biggest highlight for me was the sack. I didn't really, the other tackles didn't really matter to me, really. It matters because it was the stats, you know, I like having stats. But I think the sack was the biggest highlight for myself, personal. Tough to go against a quarterback that moves around that well? Oh, gosh. Yes, it is, really. Mm -hmm. really hate those kind of quarterbacks, <laughs> really. They should stay back in the pocket, right? Yeah, they should. How about your improvement this year? You started some last year, played some at linebacker this year. You're playing a lot of downs. Uh, what way do you think you're a better player this year? Well, the first couple of games, I was sort of in the slump because uh, I think I was thinking too much. But this particular game, I just came out and just reacted to everything, actually. So it made things a lot easier for me and the whole team, actually. Got some highlights we want you to take a look at. Mark, we'll put up on the screen right now a couple of plays for you. One, the reverse uh, that you got Mark Ross for a loss. Uh, take us through this play for you. Well, I was reading number two the whole uh, game because he was a big playmaker. So when I seen him coming around for the reverse, I pretty much took a chance, tried to cut him off with the intercept. And how about this play? This one, same thing. I was keying him up. I was going to go for the pick, but at the end of the half, you know, put the ball on the 10-yard line. I didn't think that would do us any good, so I just tried to make him think about who was back there a little bit next time he came out. Free safety, a more physical position in the corner? Definitely. Get a lot of big hits, you know, some cheap shots. <laughs> like that, but you got to take them, you know, when you get your chance because receivers can't just run through the secondary, you know, at their own will. You got to make them think about it. Let's take a look at a couple of plays uh, from David Strickland's uh, work on Saturday. Uh, David, first one I believe uh, we're looking to look at here is uh, you stopping the run. Tell us about it. Well, Bob, he, uh, the hole, the hole just opened up, so I just got there before he did, so I just wanted to make him think about it. And I think this is your sack. Uh, what are you looking at as he's scrambling around? Well, uh, on that play, you see uh, how defense end fell because actually I wanted to sack pretty bad. So I guess I was being kind of selfish to get there. But, you know, whatever it takes. A lot of competition amongst the players on defense? Uh, well, I try to make I try to make it like that. It gave me more incentive to uh, be the one to get to the tackle first, actually. Talk about the linebacking play this year. It looks like one of the strengths of this Bison defense. A lot of veteran linebackers that have played. looks like you guys got a lot of guys who can do a lot of things. Yeah, I feel good on the field playing with them, too, because they're pretty good. They're actually, they're very good. And I feel pretty confident out there being with, you know, Russ and Welty and Robert, all the rest of them. Mark, a lot of teamwork is involved in the secondary as well. Is, are people starting to feel more comfortable working with one another now? Well, we have Willie Jackson back there now. He's really he's a great athlete playing. Charlie, you know, from last year, playing the same position. And uh, John Henry. I think the thing that makes us, you know, a good secondary is that everybody plays a different role back there. I mean, we have a variety of different players. We have, you know, good man-to-man -man covers and Charlie and Willie. Have John Henry coming up, stopping the run. And I'm back there trying to keep everything together, you know. Any leaks that come by, I try and close them up. But I think as a unit, we really come together. And then, you know, of course, Jeroshek, Dave Todd come in and do a great job when they come in on nickel. So, and, and I think the thing is, is we're going to get a lot better in the next three or four games because a lot of us are new at our positions, so. I think we're going to be a great secondary back there. Well, Mark and David, I want to thank you guys for joining us here on the show today. Uh, great games on Saturday. I look for seven more of them just like that. Thanks, Bob. Awesome. David Strickland, linebacker. Mark Miller, free safety. We'll be back to talk about the Princeton Tigers, with, excuse me, the uh, Towson State Tigers with Coach Lou Maranzana after this timeout. You're watching Bucknell Football 94. 1846, scholars have come together at Bucknell to ask questions and explore answers. Inspired by the fresh spirit of the newest students and the seasoned wisdom of the faculty, this meeting of minds fosters achievement. Bucknell professors enjoy national reputation, and Bucknell students are known for their intelligence. Their lively exchanges extend from classrooms and seminars to informal meetings in faculty offices and the campus snack bar. Bucknell is a comfortable place for the tradition of the classics and the demands of today's society. The arts, humanities, and sciences thrive alongside professional programs in engineering, education, management, and music. The environment for this growing diversity and the ongoing meeting of minds is a very beautiful campus in central Pennsylvania. Bucknell's stately buildings and beautiful trees and gardens provide an ideal collegiate setting. Bucknell, with 3,300 undergraduates and over 260 faculty members who sustain the spirit that is this university and who carry it with them throughout their lives. At Bucknell University, we pride ourselves in doing intercollegiate athletics the right way. 
We're extraordinarily proud of our student athletes and their record of success in terms of Patriot League scholar athletes, academic All-Americans, and NCAA postgraduate scholarship winners. In addition, our graduation rate of student athletes has been number one in the country over the past three years. The goal of the athletic program at Bucknell University is to provide a competitive Division I experience for over 750 athletes in 26 men's and women's varsity programs. In order for us to enjoy our current level of success, we need your help. You can support our student athletes by joining the Bison Club. I'm certain that the self-satisfaction that you gain from assisting student athletes to have a quality competitive Division I experience will be well worth your while. On behalf of the student athletes at Bucknell University, thank you. For more information, write to the Bison Club in care of Bucknell University or call 717-524-1358. The second week in a row, the Bison will be playing the Tigers, and the Tigers will be playing the Bison. Bucknell will play Towson State at home on Saturday, and uh, Towson State played the Howard Bison last week. Yeah, it's a hell of a coincidence. Uh, <laughs> two Tigers and two Bisons uh, week after week. This is a different bunch of Tigers, though, I'll mm -hmm. tell you. That, you know, I've got a bunch of people that have just great skill and great athletic ability, um, you know, on both sides of the ball, on offense and on defense. Uh, maybe not quite as physical as uh, the team that we played last year when we played them, uh, but they're really going to present us on both sides of the ball with a little different dimension, different style, and different type of players than we saw this week. Coach, it looks like the stopping Dan Crowley in a few seconds of the show is going to be the key to the game. He's a guy that's been starting for four years. He's got all the numbers. Uh, he can use the, the, the skill that they have. They do a lot of individual routes and just try and play me and you and uh, kind of get it get it done and uh, he's, he's a guy that we definitely will have to stop and uh, he's a big key. The running back is a good player though, McCarty, and uh, so there's more balance there than it looks. Well, for Coach Lou Maranzana, this is Bob Beeler speaking. We'll take a look at the Towson State highlights next week. Thanks for watching.